All right, so how are we going to split up our numbers into individual digits? So there's a pretty old algorithm for doing this. And so I'm just going to show you an example of it. The subproblem here is converting multi-digit numbers into single digits. And we can collect all the digits by just doing modulo 10. And modulo 10 just gets us like the last digit. And that last digit in this case for 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1,234 is just 4. After that's done, we divide the whole number by 10, and we end up with 123. Now obviously we aren't rounding, we're truncating. So, well I guess maybe it's not obvious, so I could do 6 here, but we would just truncate this to 123. So 123 modulo 10 is then 3, and we repeat this all the way until we get to 0. And once we get to 0, that means we're done, there's no more digits left. So that's the algorithm we're going to be implementing. Honestly, we, we don't even need to implement an algorithm since um, I think at most there's only ever three or four digits at a time on screen. But this is just a, this was easier for me to think of and less typing, so I just decided to do it this way. So let's jump into our number sprite.h file. And instead of using a boost shared pointer of sprite, I'm going to have a standard vector, so I'll include vector. And it's going to be of boost shared pointers. And instead of calling it sprite, I'm going to call it not digits because it's not going to be, we're not collecting the digits in order. You can kind of see in this algorithm, we collect the last digit and then the second to last, and then we go backwards through the digits. So I'm going to call this reverse digits because we're going to collect them like I showed you in the algorithm. So I'll call that reverse digits. And now let's go into our number sprite.cc and actually implement this algorithm. So I'm going to comment this out. And work, let's work through our algorithm. So the first thing we do is I'm going to do a do while loop so that we always make sure that we collect at least one digit. So if the number is zero, then we collect the number zero. So I'm going to do do while, and then while the number is not equal to zero, I'll keep going. And this assumes that the number is positive, so or zero. So let's assert that number is greater than or equal to zero. And we can fix this assertion later if we decide we want to do damage points by using a negative sign, but for now, let's do it this way. So we're asserting that the number is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we want to collect our digits. So the first digit is just going to be the number modulo 10. Now we can store this digit into our sprites our reversed digits sprites. So let's, instead of having sprite, we will change this to reversed digits dot push back and we'll construct a boost shared pointer and then add another parenthesis at the end. The other thing we need to do is instead of using number here, we want to use our digit. So there we go. Now we have one digit. What did I say we need to do at the end of that? So we did the mar modulo 10 to collect our digit. Then we divide by 10 to get one, um, to get to the next digit. So we'll do number divide equals 10. And this will do truncation because that's how integer division works. <clears throat> Let's see. So now for drawing, we don't want to draw in. So we don't want to draw everything on top of each other for drawing, so we're going to need to work on that. But I'll just start with our for loop. So for, for i equals 0, i is less than reversed digits dot size minus 1. Nope. Yep. Plus plus i. OK, so we're going to have x plus some offset, offset so that they don't draw on top of each other. So what's this offset going to be? Um, let's let me change this to reverse digits of i. So what's this offset going to be? It's going to be uh, it's going to be in units of game. 
And we can think of it in terms of the number of digits it's going to be offset times the size of the digit. So the size of the digit is pretty easy. It's going to be units um, k half tile. And so then we need to think of how far through, how many digits away from the very beginning are we? So at the very end, we are going to be, if i is equal to reverse digits dot size minus one, then our offset should be zero. And so we can say when reverse, so here, let me write it out. So when, so when i equals then offset equals zero. So when is that the case? Well, the case, that is the case when reversed, here, let me just do a little algebra for you guys. So we can say when zero, just subtract i from both sides, and we can see that that is this right here. <laughs> Good job, Chris, you can explain things. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'll leave those in there. But I just did a little bit out of algebra, just working backwards. So when i is reverse digits dot size minus one, then our offset should be zero. So we just do a little bit of algebra, and we say um, our, offset, our offset is zero when this value is zero. OK. So now I think we can see how this works. So I'll build and run. OK, so sweet. We have A12. And it looks good, except it's offset to the right a little bit too much. So let's pull that back over to the left in our player.cc class. When we draw it, instead of doing two, we can do three halves. I'll just do that because it's easier. So let's build and run this. OK, yeah, much better. So that's great. We're done, right? OK, no, we're not actually done. You could probably tell by the tone of my voice that we're not actually done. Because when I switch this back to 3, it should still be flush against the right side. But it's not. It's flush with the heart side. And that doesn't look right. And it's something that we need to fix. So we need to basically incorporate um, sort of number of digits that we want our number sprite to take up. So if we give our number sprite a num digits, our constructor a num digits, we can sort of figure out, we can calculate how much padding we need to use. So num digits. I'm just going to have a default to zero. Um, and zero is going to mean that we don't care. Um, so if num digits is zero, we don't care how much space it takes up. All right, so I also need to include the num digits here. And how am I going to use this? So. First of all, I'm going to say in our player.cc class when we use our, when we create our number sprite, we want our health sprite or health number to always take up two digits in width. And then it's going to be right justified, so it always shifts over to the right as far as it can. So that's what this num digits is going to do, is it's going to figure out how far it needs to shift over to the right. So I'm going to create a units of type game for padding. And I'll initialize that to zero up here. And I'm just going to add it to our x offset. So if our offset plus our padding. OK, so how much do we need to shift over to the right? Well, 
if num digits is so if num digits is zero no shifting otherwise if num digits is equal to the actual digit count which we'll have to figure out based on the number in right here actually we can figure this out right now so let's do int digit count and start it out to be zero and every time we go through this we just inc increase our digit count So if num digits is digit count, no shifting. Another assumption I want to make is that we don't get bad numbers. So our digit count is never greater than our num digits, unless num digits is of course zero. So I'm gonna make that assertion down here. So assert either num digits is zero or num digits is greater than or equal to digit count. This is so that we don't end up with us them saying, oh, we want to keep it to two digits, which is really going to be us because we're the ones using it. But we want to keep it to two digits, but here's 134. You figure it out. No, we don't we don't handle that situation. That's what this is saying. So we need to make we need to make our padding equal then. So if num digits is zero. then we can just make our padding equal to zero. Otherwise, we can just do num digits minus our digit count. And then multiply that times our tile or our digit size. So that's going to be units k half tile times that. So I'll leave those in there. So let's F7 to build or whatever it is for you guys, F5 to run. And sweet, um, it's padded to the right and it's all right justified and it looks great. So I'm gonna just double check to make sure that it works if we do 12. So, or, or how about 52 because that is another number besides 12. And this looks amazing. So yeah, that's our number class. That's our number sprite class. We're gonna be adding more to it later. I just want to finish up with a little bit of refactoring. Now that we have our number class, we can make some constants for these kind of magic values. I'm not going to worry about 52. Two is a constant that we can get rid of. Um, so let me start up where we actually use our sprite. So we're going to need a health number sprite draw position and a health number num digits. So health number digits. So const units of game, okay, health number x equals blah and y also equals blah. <clears throat> and then num digits equals two. So let's find our other two. Okay, health number num digits and then where we draw it it's also important to grab that so actually I can just remember that this is three halves and two so this is three halves and two units pile to game three divided by two and units pile to game two So we'll just replace these with k health number x um, that's it for player class let's also make some constants here in our number class mostly mostly the source stuff so let's just create another namespace we don't really need to create a namespace that I discovered recently because const has static linkage um, and therefore won't conflict with anything but I'm doing it out of habit and then kind of also just to 
keep it all in one place like you know like you always can just look inside of the namespace for any constants and stuff so it's just kind of creating a nice scope for stuff and putting it in a namespace for i guess no benefit really so let's do const standard string for k sprite path This first is going to be case source x, so this will be units of game k source x. Source y is going to be inside of here. Source width and source height. That's one half, and that's one half. So now let's actually use these. I think that takes, I'm not going to do this 10 just because that's like something so innate. It's like, where does it come from? Well, it comes from the number of fingers you have. Base 10. I don't know. I just don't feel like making a constant for it. Because what would I name it? If any of you guys have ideas for what to name this 10, um, shoot them at me. I'd love to hear it. I think that's pretty much it for what I want to move into constants. Ugh. Maybe I'll move those into I'll, I'll move those into constants later. I'm kind of moving. I'm kind of planning on moving these, so I don't want to just make a constant for them quite yet. Okay, so let's build. Make sure that this all builds correctly. Conversion warning. That's not good. Argument conversion from units of game to int possible loss of data. Well, that's probably because I should have called this an integer, like it is. And digit is an undeclared identifier. So I guess I can't make a constant for that. That was pretty dumb. So let's do that instead. The rest of it I can make constants for, though. So I'll build and run just to make sure it's all good. And so we can see it again. It looks so beautiful. Mm. It just touches my heart. It really does. Why? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Happy developing.